Well, hello. Thanks for joining me today as we talk about Venice, the Adriatic, and Greece with Viking Ocean Cruises. I'm Carol Shaddix with Imagine Going There Travel, and we are your Viking Cruise Specialists. And we're here today to give you a glimpse of this wonderful itinerary to see if it might fit with your vacation plans. So we're going to talk about the Viking Ocean ships, which are new ever since 2015 when the first ship hit the water. And they went straight to number one and have stayed there ever since, even winning first place award last year for Viking River and Ocean. And I think you'll see why as we go through this presentation. Now, Viking will take you pretty much anywhere in the world you want to go. We sailed to over 403 ports, 95 countries, seven continents, five Great Lakes, and really just about anywhere you choose to go that's on your bucket list, we can make sure that we will get you there. Give me a call. We'll be happy to help plan out the perfect flight itinerary for you. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Viking philosophy, which is not to be everything to everyone. We really do try to cater to that English speaking, mature clientele who's interested in art, history, and culture. We love our destinations and we really do try to spend a lot of time in each one. And that's a real hidden benefit we'll talk more about later. Viking's a very inclusive cruise line. You're not going to feel like you're getting nickel and dimed. Very efficient operator with all the ships being sister ships. They can spread their costs across the fleet and it makes for a very seamless way to predict costs as well as it's wonderful for clients to know that whether they're on the Viking Star or the Viking Mars, the ships are going to be virtually identical. The newer ships in the last couple of years do have a planetarium above the Explorer Lounge, which is extra fun. Other than that, everything is exactly the same. Viking hires the best staff in industry, and it's because the Viking employees know that Viking is a growing company that really cares about them. And the chairman says that if you have a happy employee, you have a happy guest, and our employees really make you feel like you're a part of the family. We're called the Thinking Persons Cruise because we know that guests really travel to learn more about culture and history and understanding the areas that they're sailing to. Viking is great about giving great resources to prepare you in advance for your trip. And then, of course, we have a lot of great excursions, both uh, once you get off the ship, either the optional excursions or the included panoramic ones about the city, hosted by wonderfully knowledgeable local guides who will tell you all about the city in a very informed and passionate way. We are called the small ship experts. Viking has been in business over 25 years. And so there's a long history of taking great care of their clients. As I said, we've got these state of the art sister ships. Uh, we really do spend a lot of time in port. And this is one thing I really encourage clients to look at when they are looking and comparing similar itineraries from different cruise lines. How many hours are you in each port of call makes a big difference because Viking ships sail closer to, to land. You don't have to do as many tender transfers back and forth, which does eat up a lot of time. And you also have the ability to sail close to land, see the beautiful coastline as you sail. And it really makes a difference in the amount of time that you spend in port. We are always there close to the center of town as, as much as we possibly can be and have uh, the wonderful ability to just walk on and off the ship at leisure, which really does give you feeling that you are have a home away from home and can explore at will. Of course, Vikings Dining is legendary and we have a lot of great fare, not only your, your classic dishes, but we also have those taste of our destination. So you really can experience what it is like to have local fare that is freshly prepared by our Viking chefs. We've got a lot of dining choices at sea as well eight different dining options, and there's no charge for any of them. Even our specialty restaurants, Manfredi's and the chef's table are free to you. They just require a reservation, which we'll talk about at the end where, when you can book your short excursions and your specialty dining. The Viking way is to really help you learn, explore, and understand about the different cultures and the cities that we're sailing through. How we do that is we have our Included tours, one in every port of call, very much a panoramic view and overview of the city. 
Then we have Working World, Local Life, and Privileged Access. So Local Life is, of course, how people live in the countries that uh, you're visiting. You might be able to do a home visit, for instance, and share coffee and a pastry or tea or some kind of particular um, snack. Talk with your your guests, interpreted by your Viking guide if needed. Share stories and traditions and photos and memories. And it's a wonderful way that our guests kind of get to know other cultures in a more intimate setting and really enjoy that. Working world is going to be how people live and work, whether you're going to a winery, learning about the business of getting from the vines into the bottles or an olive grove and learning about how those are harvested. Maybe it's the Mercedes-Benz factory. Lots of great options that allow you to kind of go behind the scenes and learn about the business of, of that um, we have from vendors in other countries who are willing to open up their doors and share that uh, information with us. And then privileged access. What a great opportunity this is to go behind the scenes in a very special backstage way, whether it's going to a palace and getting to visit um, the, learn about the inner workings and the history of the Lopkowitz Palace in Prague, for instance, or maybe it's cooking in a Tuscan castle where you're able to go to a castle and learn about the history and the vineyards that they have there and experience cooking uh, demonstration, enjoying some wonderful food, a glass of their house wine that allows you to visit with the owners. It's a wonderful privilege and Viking does a stellar job with those and it can't be purchased anywhere else. So love having that option to share with our guests as well. And then this slide's very important. It's kind of what we are not. And some of the things that I like to highlight is no casinos or art auctions. There's not gonna be photographers. <clears throat> So you don't have to worry about having your picture taken every time you turn around, interrupting your dinner, or perhaps having to get pressured to go to an art auction to buy something or a casino that wants you to spend your money. You really are allowed to relax. Even there are laundrettes on board with soap. So you don't have to worry about paying to have your laundry done if you want to do a quick load to get you through your trip. We also have our standard inclusions, which are your beer, wine, and soft drinks included with your meals, Wi-Fi. Of course, we have um, a wonderful spa that gives you access to a state-of-the-art spa. Uh, if you want to have services like massage or facial, you'll pay for that, of course. No inside staterooms. We have no formal nights. So it really is a relaxed way to enjoy fellow travelers. And probably one of my favorite is there are no children under 18. As the chairman said, our guests like to travel with their grandchildren. They just don't like traveling with other people's grandchildren. And I think there's a great consensus on that as well. Then we have our guest lectures. We have our, our guest lectures as well as our resident historians that will be on board to give you deep insights into the cultures, the area, the history of, of the towns that we're sailing through. And we have destination performances as well, which brings local talent on board to, to give you a great feel of the uh, different music, for instance, or, or different types of background in the areas that we are sailing through. And now we're going to talk about the actual destination of Venice, the Adriatic in Greece. I'm going to turn my camera off so you can see these wonderful images. And we're going to start with um, an overview of the uh, tour. So we are doing uh, Venice to Athens going this direction. And you will notice with the uh, white dot on the map here that that means that we overnight. And this is a wonderful thing, getting extra time in the beautiful city of Venice. Then we go to Split, Dubrovnik, Couture, Montenegro, into Corfu and in Greece, Catacolon, and then ending in Athens. Now, the Empires of the Mediterranean is very similar to this. We have uh, a day in Venice, but no overnight, as you can see, but we spend an overnight in Athens. We actually get to spend a little bit more time along the Adriatic coast into Kopur, Slovenia, uh, into Zadar. Again, we do duplicate with Dubrovnik and Couture and Corfu, Catacolon in Athens, but then we also include Santorini. So Santorini is a very popular 
option. And if you want to do 10 days going over there, then I recommend doing Empires of the Mediterranean. So we're just going to do an overview of our Venice, the Adriatic, and Greece. And of course, you're going to be traveling through some of the most picturesque areas of the world. This is a wonderful AT itinerary that visits the four countries of Italy, Croatia, Montenegro, and Greece. And so we're starting here on our virtual tour tour in this beautiful city of Venice, famous for art and architecture, so much culture, so many different islands here. This is one of those cities where there is just so much to see and do. You will just be amazed at all of the options. And uh, we also will talk about our extensions at the end. Our Tuscany extension in particular for this itinerary sells out very quickly. So we love to encourage clients to book that. You can always drop it prior to your air being booked and uh, at least preserve that should you decide you want to go. So we have lots of canals, uh, footbridges here, just a beautiful city that is a uh, great attraction. And then we have some real popular things to see even in the city square. We have the St. Mark's Basilica built in 1092 and set the bones of St. Mark were smuggled out of Alexandria by Phoenician merchants in 828. Then we have the uh, Palazzo del Cal, which is the Doge's Palace, beautiful uh, government house here. And of course, here is a great picture of the square. Lots to see and do in Venice. You'll have plenty of time with an overnight, but of course, if you want to spend extra time, you can do that. In uh, one of our optional excursions, we have a visit to Murano and Burano. These um, trades were actually moved to these islands in 1291 to reduce the risk of fires. Jar Burano is a charming town known for its lace, its beautiful, brightly colored houses. You'll get to stroll along some beautiful cobblestone streets here and have lots of shopping opportunities here. There are a lot of great optional excursions as well. One of those I thought was fun was the carnival face making uh, face mask uh, excursion, which helped you learn how to make those uh, beautiful face masks that they use for the carnival time uh, in Venice. Our next day is a visit to Split, and we are going to walk through Split's 17 centuries of architecture here. Some incredible scenery that you'll get to, to see were birthed right by this historic center. You'll go off to your ship and walk with your guide to the old quarter. And this is one of the oldest towns on the Adriatic, and you'll get to see this fourth century palace that was erected for the Emperor, uh, Roman Emperor Diocletian. This was his retirement haven. You'll be able to explore the well-preserved cellars with ha which has an ethnographic, ethnographic museum there. Um, it's got a beautiful bell tower, which is a, um, a circular cathedral uh, there as well, Cathedral of St. Dominus. And you'll actually be able to see the Pillar of Shame, which dates back to the first century. And this is where criminals were hanged in the Middle Ages. Now, a popular optional excursion, especially if you love nature, is going to be a visit to the Satina River cruise and this uh, walking tour. So you'll travel with your guide to a little town called Omis. It's right on the banks of the Satina River, and you'll have a 45-minute cruise included with it in addition to looking at the beautiful coastline of Croatia, you'll see these canyons, and then you'll also get a visit to um, in Split to be able to look around the historic quarter as well. Then anytime you can visit some of the natural beauty of Croatia, I would really encourage you to do this. Krakon National Park is very, very popular. There are 17 cataracts. They stretch over 1,300 feet uh, some of them fall from 150 feet from their highest point and really are beautiful. You will um, enjoy some beautiful walking. There's some great boardwalk area to walk through. At some point, um, they're like three over 300 feet wide at, at in spots. And so they've got some wonderful view viewing platforms. You'll take some incredible photos. I've seen some really wonderful ones that our guests have shared with me and have really enjoyed it. 
The next day, we will be stopping in Dubrovnik, and this is a beautiful city that comes right down to the coastline, as you can see. And this is um, built back in the 12th century, so you'll have uh, incredible views here. You can tell that uh, if you recognize this, this is uh, also where the Game of Thrones was filmed and it really increased its popularity as well as Star Trek. Uh, but you'll get off with your guide here. You'll be able to do an included tour of the city and you'll explore on foot. You'll see the historic pile gate. There is a 15th century Sponda Palace with a beautiful fountain here. Uh, you can step inside the Dominican Monastery, which has some incredible Renaissance paintings. Um, you can also do an optional tour where you explore the Dubrovnik Riviera, Riviera uh, along the peninsula and see some incredible views from a smaller ship. Uh, we have uh, some really wonderful optional excursions here as well. You can do a cable car ride from the top. This is the uh, actual walled city and you can walk around it. It's a very aggressive type of uh, exploration and it can be slick. So make sure you wear good shoes if it's raining, but this is an impressive fortress and one that is so uh, popular. Good exercise. You'll get all your steps in for this one for sure and uh, be able to explore uh, Dubrovnik to your heart's content. It's a wonderful day here and a very popular option. Now, an uh, optional excursion that I would really recommend, basically anything that Viking does that's flavors of or taste of is something that our guests really love. And this is one that I really encourage you to do. Now you'll notice it says activity level is moderate. So always look for that. Make sure you're up for either the length of the day or maybe it'll tell you what is, maybe there's more steps or it's a longer day or more walking than normal. So you do wanna notice this is about a seven and a half hour long tour, but there is a lot that's included here. You're gonna get a meal, you'll have shopping, sightseeing. There's gonna be a UNESCO World Heritage um, site that is an overview of, Croatia, but then we're going to go deeper and take you into um, a local area. The scenic drive is going to be wonderful, but you're going to be able to explore an uh, old house that you'll see a horse driven olive mill, and you'll get to taste some homemade flavors such as cheese or smoked ham or maybe a local wine. You might see how flour is produced with an old water powered stone mill or you meet a local family and talk about how they've lived there for generations, learn about their traditions and what they like to eat and do taste, maybe a locally preserved uh, brandy, uh, do some shopping. And of course, if you enjoy some local talent, they may even do some uh, singing for you and do some of their uh, particular songs and um, hear from a local musician there and learn a little bit about the interior of of Croatia and enjoy some great food as well. These do sell out quickly. So make sure when you are booking your shore excursions and we'll talk about the their different categories and when those open up for you, but always put things in your cart and purchase them right away. Don't wait until everything is on the schedule to your liking. When it's in the cart, it is still live for anyone else to get. And if there's something that you particularly want, put it in the cart pay for it, come back, and then, for instance, add your shore excursions or something that will um, maybe can be replaced later with another option. Now, day five, we are going to be in the beautiful area of Couture, Montenegro. This is a medieval city. It dates back to the 14th century. Some of these walls were constructed back in 1420, and um, they've been reinforced through the centuries. You can actually um, climb these walls and look around, get some incredible views. You will see the limestone cliffs and uh, just have a chance to explore, which I love to do, this beautiful city. If you want to do an optional excursion, there is a excursion to one of Montenegro's oldest settlements called Set Sveti Stefan. And you'll drive along the beautiful coastline of Couture, and pause to see this resort island, which is where Sophia Loren and Elizabeth Taylor were known to stay. Our next day, we are going to be in Corfu and we're gonna 
spend an entire day on this romantic island. Beautiful white beaches are here and our included tour takes us on a drive. We'll do a photo stop to Tiny Mouse Island. There's a local monastery here. In fact, there are several monasteries uh, as well that are uh, well, well photographed. And you'll tour the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Corfu Old Town. And interesting thing that they have is the Liston Promenade established in 1807. It was actually only for aristocrats. You could not uh, actually pass this way unless your name was written in the golden book, the Libro Doro. So that's very interesting. One of the fun things to do if you're active, you can do Corfu by mountain bike, maybe do it by four by four vehicle. We also have an optional excursion that will take you to an olive wood manufacturing shop where you'll learn about the art of olive wood carving. We have a special excursion that is to the Theotokia Estate. And this is one of Greece's premier wine labels. And you'll go visit their 30 acres of vines. They'll show you how the wine is produced and then you'll get a chance to tour the wine press and stroll about the farm. So lots to do in Corfu. And this is uh, the most photographed monastery there in Corfu. Day seven takes us to Olympia, Greece, the site of the first Olympiad, and you'll feel like you are stepping back in time to the first Olympic Games. We'll be able to see the Temple of Zeus, the remains of that. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. You'll be able to, um, as you go with your guide, you'll pass some incredible um, olive groves, orchards, and vineyards. Uh, really, in the shadow of Mount Kronos, you're going to see some amazing uh, options of uh, history as you go by. You'll have a chance to uh, drive by the largest stadium of the day. It held 45,000 spectators. There's also the Olympia Archaeological Museum if you want to explore that and learn more and dig into the history. <clears throat> Before I go on to Athens, there is a fun optional excursion in Olympia, which will take you to a a club called the Tourist Club owned by uh, Mrs. Basso, who will welcome you into her home. She'll give you a cooking demonstration of how to make traditional Greek food. Uh, you'll get a chance to learn a few steps of the national dance, which is called Surtaki. And you might recognize that from the movie Zorba the Greek. So you're going to step back into a, um, a real cultural, enjoyable experience of dance, food, a little bit of education and come away from the afternoon with a light heart from the fun experience you had at Mrs. Basso's house. And then our last day is going to be in Athens. Now we do have an included panoramic drive that will show you all the highlights and you'll get a chance to pass the promenade where the um, Parliament Constitution Square is and the Presidential Guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is as well. We also have a National Archaeological Museum, which is uh, one of the world's best. It has over 11,000 exhibits with a really great overview of Greek civilization. You'll get to see um, this incredible stadium and, of course, uh, get a chance to walk in the Placa District. If you can do this in the evening when the city is lit up, you will love doing that. You might want to take an optional excursion to the Acropolis, climb those 80 steps, or do something on uh, in Athens with an electric bike, which will give you a little assist up those hills. So there's lots to do in Athens. I would really encourage you to extend your stay for two nights where you're gonna have <laughs> time to <clears throat> explore it in greater detail, see the Parthenon or the Temple Athena. Uh, you can have uh, time to explore at your leisure. So when biking includes the extensions, it's always gonna have your transfers. As long as your air is with Viking, your uh, city tour, if it's not included with your Viking a cruise, you'll have daily breakfasts and the services of a Viking host during your stay. Now, I really would encourage you, if you want to delve more into classical history, definitely do classical Greece because they are uh, do an incredible job of taking you on some included tours and really help you see a lot of, of Greece on this extra 
four nights. I had a client that did this and did the Tuscany extension, which we'll talk about in a moment, said they were absolutely the highlights of the trip. So if you've gone that far, go ahead and add those. We always encourage you, like I said, add the extensions, and then you can always take them off at the end if you choose uh, not to do them as long as it's prior to ticketing. It's very hard to find cancellations once they sell out. But we do have two nights in Venice and then our ultimate Italy. Absolutely the most popular one we have. Uh, very hard to find usually, especially unless you're booking far out. I would definitely say book the itinerary around the extensions that you want to make sure that <clears throat> you can take advantage of those. Ultimate Italy is absolutely just impressive. Uh, you'll find more information as you go below the map. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then down the day by day itinerary, as you see here, day 13, then we come to the optional extensions at the bottom. When you click on those, it'll give you all the details, idea of where you might be staying, all the inclusions, and what there is to see in each city. So definitely look into those. Um, a great way to extend and enhance your trip. For one of my clients, she said, our pre-extension in Tuscany was a wonderful start to our trip and one of our favorite areas of Italy. We love the villa we've stayed in and every part of this extension. The villa, the hosts, our guide Francesca and driver Valentina, the included excursions, the food, absolutely everything was wonderful. We made many friendships with our fellow Viking travelers during this extension that we maintain to this day. So encourage you to have that extra uh, magical experience that Viking does so well. We also have Como and the Italian Lakes for three nights, three nights as well as Lake Como and Verona. So if you've not booked um, with by Ameritra going their travel before with your Viking cruise, certainly want to encourage you to do so. And why is that? Viking's all we do. You're never going to pay more for your trip. Plus, you'll have our whole team watching over your reservations. So I like to see it's everything you love about Viking, only better. And we're able to add some extras too. Our bookings get at least a 200 ship board credit, 100 per person. And new guests, you're always going to get that 200 referral or 100 per person, in addition to any other promotions that we might be able to add. So if you've never been on a Viking cruise, you might want to hang around. We'll do a quick tour. These are the beautiful Viking ships. Yacht-like. Everything is a veranda. Just stunning in every respect. This is the atrium where you are going to spend some time. As you wait for dinner, you'll hear some live music. Enjoy visiting with your friends. See the interactive screen as it shows places Viking sales. At 6 p.m., we have a partnership with the Edvard Munch Museum, which allows you to have some culture and get to learn more about the work of Norway's native son. This is the living room and you can see Viking is designed to just encourage um, community and fellowship. Maybe you've met some new friends on your tours and you're just really going to enjoy sitting here and enjoying um, having some time right before you start your um, dinner period, and it's just a wonderful way to feel like you're inviting someone into your home. The Explorer's Lounge is the popular place on the ship. Definitely want to be here when you're leaving the Bay of Couture. You can see the faux reindeer skins and the interactive maps. Look at this view. Can you imagine just being here and having such incredible views as you are uh, having a day of scenic sailing or sailing out the Bay of Couture, for instance? well-stocked library. You'll see people up here reading or napping and always uh, great resources uh, related to the cities that you're sailing to. The Winter Garden is a special place where afternoon tea, one of my favorite things to do, happens. And you'll have some live music here. I remember we had over like 20 different loose tea options and high tea was just incredible. We enjoyed uh, the the time to relax and wine, talk about our day. It just felt very elegant and uh, a real nice cap to our busy day before our dinner. And this is where you'll spend time if you want to get some exercise. Our heated pool, we have a retractable roof. Whether the weather is perfect or not, we have ways for you to enjoy some fresh air and uh, really get a chance to visit and get some exercise. In the evenings, you can turn into a open air entertainment area, whether we have entertainment, live entertainment, or watching movie under the stars, your Bose headphones, a nice warm blanket will make you feel like you're doing something fun and a nice way to top off a busy day. The infinity pool gives you that 
chance to feel like you're swimming in your destination. Very innovative. No other ship has that. And then we have this incredible spa. So the Viking way or the Nordic way is to stimulate the body with heat and cold. And so we have a lot of opportunities to do that. Of course, we've got the pool and you'll see guests sitting on those um, that benches just talking about the day. Then we've got the hot tub area. We've got a continuous current so you can swim if you choose to and get that exercise. And then we have uh, this area, cold plunge pool, sauna, beautifully designed uh, locker rooms for gentlemen and ladies. Then we have our snow grotto. This is where gently falling snowflakes are coming down. You step in there and you get that brisk um, cold air. Then you jump into the sauna and you kind of give the body a shock with uh, heat and cold. You're going to feel 10 years younger and raring to go for the next day of your shore excursions. Of course, dining is a wonderful part of uh, each experience. Beautiful views here in the dining area. You never have to worry about dressing up, very casual and relaxed. What we like to say is business casual. So how you would go to a friend's house for dinner is perfectly fine for our dining. And you can see there's small tables. You can sit everywhere, anywhere you choose, uh, mix it up every night if you like, and enjoy uh, getting to know different guests and different wait staff, which is always fun. And Freddie's Italian restaurant has an amazing beefsteak Florentine. This is one of your restaurants that you'll make reservations for, and it's very popular. Uh, our guests really enjoy this, and uh, as well as the chef's table, which is a five-course pairing menu, and they change it every couple of days. So definitely sign up for those, and you can also do it on board the ship. We never had trouble getting an option to dine for our group uh, when we were on board the ship. So don't worry if you don't see the reservations when your booking window opens up. Plenty of things shift once you are on board. Now, Mamsen's is a Norwegian deli. You will have option for Belgian waffles in the morning with caramelized goat cheese, wonderful desserts in the afternoon. They have an incredible split pea soup that's at 10 o'clock at night. And this is a nod to the chairman's mother, which is right there. And she's pulling the chairman on that toboggan there. And these dishes are a replica of what she had when uh, the chairman, Torsten Hagen, was growing up. So a wonderful uh, piece of family history and some great food as well. And then we have lots of options. Places to eat outside are many. And the food at the Aqua Beat Terrace is great. You will really enjoy it, especially the gelato. But flavors change daily, so enjoy while you can, because you probably won't see that again on your sailing. As much as I loved certain flavors, I was always challenged to try something new the next day because they did not repeat. And you'll enjoy dining outside on great weather like this. Now, tips for choosing the right stateroom. This is always uh, something I think that needs a little uh, coaching, just because if you've never booked with Viking before, you're going to wonder why. Those staterooms in the box are different pricing, but all the same size. And so love to explain that. So veranda one and two, the two at the bottom are the uh, entry level. And those will be the same size, but you will book last. As you go up in category, you're going to get extra amenities, uh, sooner access to your stateroom and sooner access to booking your shore excursions or specialty dining. Then there's extras in the room as well. So for instance, in the deluxe veranda six category, deluxe veranda category one through six, all of them are the same size. They're just going to be different locations on the ship. So if you wanted more midship, you'd probably want deluxe veranda four. There is not a bad stateroom on the ship. I will tell you that. Uh, just extras if you want maybe larger accommodations and extra amenities, which I'll go through now. So this is your entry level stateroom. Isn't it beautiful? 270 square feet. Every room has a balcony, plenty of storage space, lighted closets, and we'll show you the bathrooms here, heated floors throughout, and uh, you are going to have in your entry level category, you have 3 p.m. access to your stateroom, you'll book your shore excursion 60 days prior to departure, your mini bar will come stocked free with soft drinks, water, and snacks, but it's not refilled uh, beyond that first day. When you go to the uh, bathroom, you also have these wonderful amenities. Uh, you can clearly see they're color-coded, large print. You never need your read readers to see what you're putting on your body. You have heated floors. 
anti fog mirrors, and large walk in shower showers. So, a very luxurious, even entry level category. But as you go up, you're going to have now a little bit sooner access to your stateroom. Now you get some priority booking of spa treatments, reservations, and shore excursions. And now your mini bar is restocked daily, and you have a coffee maker, use of binoculars in your stateroom as well. Penthouse Veranda actually gives you a bump up in size as well as earlier access. Now you're in your stateroom at one. That is wonderful after a long overnight flight. Get settled in, maybe take 40 winks and then get out and explore. Sooner access to book your shore excursions. Now you have alcohol in your room and also pressing and shoe shine service and the welcome bottle of champagne. This is the penthouse veranda. Ladies, that vanity is wonderful. Every room comes with that. And now the junior suite, we have extras here in that you will have uh, laundry and dry cleaning, as well as all the other benefits. You have a larger stateroom and sooner access to book those short excursions, but you also have a separate living area. There's a sofa there. You can see that uh, it kind of closes off. So it actually becomes two rooms. And that's great if you have someone's getting up early or staying up late, doesn't bother your travel partner. And the uh, penthouse junior suite bathroom has dual sinks as well as heated towel racks. Then we have the Explorer Suites, a range of sizes here. We can talk through which one's location on the ship as well as uh, the size. But of course, you get all the other things included, but you get first access to pretty much everything except the owner suite and a large uh, living area. You have chase lounges. You're either fully forward or fully aft on the ship. So unobstructed, great views. Your, have, your bathroom actually has a bathtub. This is the only category that has bathtubs, this and the owner suite. And everything that comes with the other categories are yours to enjoy as well. The only other one is the owner suite. And of course, we have many benefits here. This is where our chairman stays when he travels. And of course, you have extras like uh, video conferencing and ocean view dry sauna. You have access to the chairman's private library, wine and music collection, and a complimentary short excursion with a private car. That's a very popular one that our guests really enjoy. Look at these incredible photos. You'll get a chance to take a peek into the very top suite on the Viking ship. And that is our, a, our um, presentation today. I'm happy that you came. Our motto is great vacations matter because great memories matter the most. And we're here to help you with making those great memories. We wanna help make every aspect of your Viking experience really amazing. We really do feel honored to be part of so many great vacation experiences for our guests. And we really love adding value. We are a team that's as committed to making your vacation great as we are our own. And we love knowing those little extras that can make your experience even better. My contact information is on the screen, carol at imaginegoingair.com. Feel free to give me a call as well, 770-421-9627. And we'll be happy to help make your vacation the vacation of a lifetime. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day.